Um, and it may not actually work out because one of the 5,000 people is really loud. The one thing I will do, which I always do in all my talks, is, is the gratitude thing. Um, I want to kind of acknowledge the fact that I've obviously not been alone in, in doing Linux. Red Hat up 228%. This is the IPO that everybody was waiting for. They, of course, are behind the Linux operating software. All I've gotten today are comments about what the stock price is all morning. You know, it was at 41, it was at 42, it was at 47, it was at 53, it was at 51. Um, every machine, as far as I can tell, uh, on the show floor is pointed to their E-Trade accounts, to their broker accounts. They know the Red Hat price. I can't believe it. I, I'm the I heard just heard 53. Oh, boy. Hang on. I didn't buy it. You didn't buy? No, no, I didn't buy it. But uh, no, no, that's that's great. If it's if it's, if it's uh, you guys don't know. Well, you know, Red Hat being successful just means that it legitimizes Linux, so it's much easier for us to go out. It's kind of been a little bit divided. I mean, you've got a lot of people that are pretty hardcore, and they're they're, they're kind of offended by that, you know, because they work really hard, and they're not really getting maybe their fair share out of that. Some people do get ticked, and you know, the thing that the, you see that on a lot of mailing lists or on Slashdot, you know, you'll read. This guy is uh, really mad because he didn't get a chance to he he's didn't get a chance to do to get stock from Red Hat. He didn't get a chance to get uh, the, to get uh, a job from this other company, you know. But the the kind of the shocking secret there is that most of the really hardcore guys, you know, they don't they don't care so much. The guys that are kind of really down in the trenches, they're writing this code because they need this code. If we could invite uh, Richard Stallman, who's the uh, founder of the Free Software Association, and Tim Ney, who's the managing director. There we go. <laughs> I, ah, here it is. <laughs> I, now Richard, I, I saw you playing your recorder at, uh, in Paris at that uh, Linux conference, but I didn't have an audio track. So you, would you get them to add audio to their uh, video downstream next time? Uh, I don't have any control over that. Unfortunately, those things can only be done with non-free software. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll, we'll give you uh, the award. And before you say a word, we'll have Tim and yourself hold up a a little representation of the contribution towards the Free Software Association. So, very uh, ironic things have happened, but nothing to match this. Giving the Linus Torvalds Award to the Free Software Foundation is sort of like giving the Han Solo Award to the Rebel Fleet. <laughs> <clears throat> you see, <clears throat> some of you may not realize how far that analogy goes. But actually, let me tell you how this, how we got here. See, what happened is, 15 years ago, if you wanted to use a computer, the only way you could do it was, to, was with proprietary software, software that divides and subjugates the users. And most people just, a lot of people didn't like it, but they saw no alternative. But some of us were determined to make an alternative, and we said we're going to develop a free operating system, a free software operating system that will give users the chance to have freedom while they use their computers. Now, a lot of people said, well, it's a nice idea, but it's so hard, and we'll never get it done, so I don't want to participate. I don't believe you can ever get it done. But luckily, not everybody said that. And clearly, we knew we would eventually get the kernel done. But as it happens, somebody else did a better kernel before we did. Now, in the old days, we had an overall strategy for calling people's attention to the importance of freedom, to the freedom that they can have or not have when they use a computer. Well, what can we do about it? As far as I can tell, the only workable way of trying to change this and make that strategy work again is to spread the word that the operating system you're using is actually the GNU system. 
somewhat modified, of course. And when people know this, they'll take a look at the reasons we developed this system, they'll think about these issues, and some of them will decide they agree. So I ask people, please tell people this is the GNU system. It's the combination of GNU and Linux, so we can call it GNU slash Linux. So Larry, when you were at Stanford eight, nine years ago doing your PhD, did you ever think you'd be in this position? No. I'll, I'll tell you a time. <laughs> no, I had no idea, what did you honestly. What you when you were up your PhD? Um, you know, that's a good question. I really didn't have a good idea. I mean, here we are on this huge show floor. There are people just going crazy about Linux. We had 6,200 people crammed into a room to see Linux speak, la Linux speak last night. Here we are with you know, all of these huge vendors all over the show. It's just you have no idea that this is going to happen. I mean, this is just this little operating system that we were happy with, that a few people cared about. You know, I thought I'd have a nice little consulting business. And here I am suddenly with all of this huge show going on. It's just incredible. I mean, a year ago, you could look and say, you know, this is going to be big. And everyone's standing at the show going, you know, the show was big last year. Is it going to be... Is it going to be as big this year? Then you remind them, you know, last year was only six months ago. Then they go, oh, Linux time. So leading up to the IPO, uh, we had uh, arrived actually in San Diego on Tuesday night. We spent Wednesday morning meeting investors in San Diego. We flew up to San Francisco, spent Wednesday afternoon meeting uh, investment firms in San Francisco. Then on the Thursday morning of the IPO was when our stock would be traded publicly. So it was nice that we had ended the tour in San Francisco because we could go to the Credit Suisse trading desk the next morning to watch the public offering. And in San Francisco, being close enough to the company and to our families, we could invite people up to actually join us in the first trade. So I invited my wife, and we invited Linus and Tova and a number of other friends and people who worked in the company to join us. Whenever we invite Linus and Tova, uh, they have uh, two young children, and uh, I have a daughter, Andrea, and we always bring the kids along. So we went into the Credit Suisse trading floor with all these traders and these three-year-old kids running around and chasing each other around the, show floor, around the trading floor. So Linus and I walked in, and we walked up uh, into the trading floor, and everyone was very excited. And they, we kept asking them, well, is, how's it going? Are things going okay? And they said, oh, it's, uh, we're, we're really excited. We think things are going well. We don't want to say, you know, we don't want to jinx anything. We walked in. It was a big screen TV showing CNBC, and it was amazing to us, but the theme for the day was Linux. Now, we have an IPO that's going to go today, and when I mean go, it is going to go. The estimates I'm hearing are staggering, but watch VA Linux Systems. It goes at 1240 today. The symbol is LNUX, a provider of large-scale computer service and workstations specially designed for the Linux operating system. The original range on this IPO was 11 to $13, then 21 to 23 then 28 to 30 priced at 30 and the estimates I'm hearing, I don't want to repeat because I don't have a confirmation, but if they're true, they will blow your mind when this stock takes off at 1240.